Today, I will compare the Chase Sapphire Reserve with the Amex Platinum and go over all of the lesser known or talked about benefits and credits of these credit cards. There's even stuff in here that I didn't know about before researching for this video. I want this to be an in-depth review of the Amex Platinum and Chase Sapphire Reserve so that you can do everything you can to maximize either of the credit cards. Whether you have one of these travel cards already or you're trying to choose between one or the other, this video will make you an expert in both options. I want to warn you right now in the beginning of the video before you waste any time that this is a pretty detailed comparison video. It is not for the faint of heart. However, I will be stating my opinion and providing insights on which card may be better for you. First up, I want to compare the reward multipliers and annual fees because both of these credit cards are expensive. In fact, they are some of the most expensive generic or general travel credit cards out there right now, which means you might want to put even more of an emphasis on utilizing all of the benefits and credits I talk about in this video to make sure you make up those annual fees. The Amex Platinum is the more expensive card of the two at $695 every year, while the Chase Sapphire Reserve is at $550 every year. As for the reward multipliers, the Amex Platinum card will earn you 5x on flights booked directly with airlines or through Amex Travel Portal. This category is limited to $500,000 on flight purchases per calendar year. You'll also get 5x on hotels booked only through the Amex Travel Portal. That's it. Those are the multipliers. As you might already guess, the Chase Sapphire Reserve has more reward multipliers to choose from. 5x points on flights and 10x points on hotels and car rentals when you book through the Chase Travel Portal. 3x points on dining at restaurants, which also includes delivery services, takeout, and dining out. 3x points on other travel, such as flights or hotels booked directly, or public transit, toll booths, parking garages, Airbnbs, and more. Then 10x points on Chase dining purchases through the Chase Portal. By far, the Chase Chase Sapphire Reserve has way more everyday friendly reward categories than the Amex Platinum card does. And honestly, when I say way more, I'm really just talking about two more reward categories, which are the dining and travel reward categories. I know you see that there's a potential of earning 10x points on Chase dining purchases, but it's not an easy to use reward multiplier as you might expect. The only way to receive 10X on dining purchases is by prepaying for a meal through the Chase portal. Prepaid meals are like special events or prefix type meals where it's a set amount per person. At checkout in the Chase dining portal or the Chase portal, it must have the option prepaid reservation to pay for the meal upfront. It is hard, it is an overly marketed reward multiplier. It should not make a difference for most people. I would say that the only good thing going for the Amex Platinum reward categories is that you can book it directly with an airline to receive the 5X highest multiplier and you don't have to book through a portal for that category. Other than that, the Amex Platinum card for I would say about 90% of you will not be a great credit card to earn a lot of Amex points with. The real value from the Amex Platinum card comes from its benefits and credits, which I'm about to go over next. Be warned though that this is exactly why people love or hate this travel credit card. It is a coupon book. You have to use these perks in order to make your Amex Platinum card worth it every year. To make things easier, I'm going to compare the credits and benefits separately from the Chase Sapphire Reserve and Amex Platinum. So we're gonna start with the credits. The first credit on the Amex Platinum that you get every calendar year is a $200 hotel credit. However, to trigger this credit, you need to book a prepaid stay through the Amex Travel Portal for either a hotel in the Fine Hotels and Resorts portfolio or a hotel in the Hotel Collection portfolio. Both of these portfolios are select, curated, handpicked hotels that Amex chose. There's good news and bad news about this credit. So the bad news is that most of the time it is more expensive to book a hotel through the Amex travel portal than it is to book directly with the hotel itself. You do have cases where it is cheaper, but just be warned that it might be more common to see higher prices in the Amex travel portal. The good news is that if you book a stay at a hotel from the hotel collection, you will get complimentary benefits such as a room upgrade if there's availability, and you get a $100 experience credit to use for select activities such as dining or spa treatments. Or if you book a hotel in the fine hotels and resorts portfolio, you will get 12 p.m. check-in when available, room upgrade when available, complimentary daily breakfast for two people, $100 experience credit, guaranteed 4 p.m. late checkout, and complimentary Wi-Fi. Keep in mind that a hotel in the hotel collection requires you to stay a minimum of two consecutive nights to receive those extra benefits. But if you just want to use the hotel 
hotel credits, then a one night stay in the hotel collection will trigger the $200 hotel credit on the Amex Platinum card. Although I still would recommend to book a two night stay at least if you can for the hotel collection hotel. And for the hotels in the fine hotels and resort portfolio, you just need to book one night in order to receive all of those benefits. Honestly, this hotel credit is not a favorite credit of mine. I don't really like this credit on the Amex Platinum card. It sucks that you have to book through the Amex travel portal and it has to be a hotel in one of those two portfolios. Personally, like I said, I try to use this at a fine hotels and resorts property because I just need to book a one night stay there and get all of those benefits. But an Amex Platinum credit that I love and use very often is the $240 annual calendar year digital entertainment credit. Before this credit was released, when they were revamping the Amex Platinum card, people were hoping that this credit would cover things such as Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, Apple Music, maybe even Crunchyroll. Unfortunately, Amex gave us a really limited list of things that this credit can be used on. Those services are Disney Plus, a Disney Bundle, ESPN Plus, Hulu, The New York Times, Peacock, and The Wall Street Journal. They had SiriusXM before, but literally just recently took that off too. Ideally, I'm sure that we would all want to see more options on here, specifically more streaming services. Services. The $240 is broken down into $20 monthly increments and personally I use this on Hulu so that way I can still watch my anime. Another Amex Platinum credit that I use often is the $200 Uber Cash credit. You get this credit every calendar year and it's broken down into $15 a month, except in December, you get $35. This credit can be used for either Uber Eats or Uber Rides. A key thing to note here is that you can only use Uber Eats or Uber Rides within the United States with Uber Cash. Now here's a fun credit that you may or may not get any use from, which is a $155 Walmart Plus credit. To trigger this credit, you have to sign up for a monthly Walmart Plus membership, which costs around $13. Some of you might be wondering, what exactly is Walmart Plus? I was thinking the same thing too before signing up. And through Walmart Plus, you could get things like free shipping on walmart.com, free delivery from your local Walmart store. You could use mobile scan and go when you're going shopping inside of a Walmart. You could even get gas at Sam's Club with a Walmart Plus membership or save 10 cents per gallon at any Exxon, Mobile, or Murphy station. But a hidden Walmart Plus benefit that I don't really see people talk about is that you get a free Paramount Plus subscription. However, it is ad supported, so don't be surprised if you see ads during your show. Personally, I've used the Walmart Plus membership to get gas at Sam's Club and to get free delivery to my house. Is this a game changing credit? Probably not. But thankfully, the other credits and benefits on the Amex Platinum do make a difference or game-changing difference in my life. Like the $200 airline fee credits every calendar year. This credit can be used for seat assignments or upgrades, check bag fees, day pass lounge access, and food and beverage purchases while in flight. The bad thing about this credit is that it is only good for one airline throughout the entire year. The way that this works is at the beginning of each year in January, you have to make a choice of which airline you want to use this credit on. That list includes the following airlines. Alaska Airlines, American Airlines, Delta, Hawaiian, JetBlue, Spirit, Southwest, and United. Throughout the year, you can't change your decision. So if you chose Southwest Airlines and never fly Southwest during that year, then you pretty much just wasted the $200 credit. A trick here is to Google different ways on utilizing this credit because there are a handful of other things you could do to make sure you get your full $200 every year. An easier Amex Platinum card credit is the $100 of Saks Fifth Avenue credit that's broken down into $50 from January through June and $50 from July through December. This credit is good for either Saks Fifth Avenue purchases made online or in store. Within the past year or so, Saks Fifth Avenue has raise their free shipping requirements on online orders, which has been a total buzzkill. Before, you could use this credit on a $50 item and pay no shipping. But now your order, if I'm not mistaken, has to be like $200 before you trigger that free shipping. Despite that issue, this is a fairly simple and easy to use credit. I've used it to buy hats, multiple t-shirts, this oil diffuser thing back here behind me and a bunch of other random stuff throughout the years. These next two credits are great quality of life improvements if you travel throughout the year. The first credit is a credit for a global entry or TSA pre-check membership. My recommendation is to get global entry, especially if you get an appointment that's not so far off into the future, because I know sometimes, maybe these days, appointments for global entry interviews could be like 
months in the future. Global Entry does include all of the benefits that TSA PreCheck has, but it also expedites your immigration process if you travel to another country and are re-entering the United States. Although the second travel-related credit is the clear credit that comes with the Amex Platinum card, which is a unique credit that can't be found on too many other credit cards. Clear is a separate service from TSA PreCheck or Global Entry, but it also expedites your time in the security line at airports. With Clear Access, you basically skip the TSA PreCheck check line and go straight to the front. Honestly, I wouldn't pay for this clear membership on my own, but since the Amex Platinum card gives it to you for free, it's nice to have. Then the last two Amex Platinum credits are a $300 Equinox credit and a SoulCycle bike credit. The $300 Equinox credit is good for an Equinox Plus digital membership or an Equinox Club membership. It's basically, Equinox is a very fancy gym and expensive, bougie, etc. This credit really is a hit or miss depending on if you go to an Equinox or even if you live next to Equinox because there aren't too many around the world. Lastly, you'll get a $300 statement credit if you buy a SoulCycle at home bike. Although an Equinox Plus subscription is required to purchase a SoulCycle at home bike and access SoulCycle content. Equinox does own SoulCycle, so that's why these credits are kind of tied together. So you could probably add those two credits to the list of useless Amex Platinum credits or perks that you may never use. Hopefully you can see why people think the Amex Platinum card is a coupon book, right? That was a lot of credits to use or keep track of throughout the year. Compare that to the Chase Sapphire Reserve and you'll see a big difference. Chase Sapphire Reserve has a $300 annual travel credit which can be used on the same transactions that trigger the 3x travel reward multiplier, which again are things like flights, hotels, Airbnbs, ride shares, public transportation, parking garages, toll booths, and more. That's the one major credit on this credit card, but they are a few more that come with it. Like I mentioned earlier, you do get a global entry or TSA pre-check or Nexus credit. Nexus is a membership used when you're driving across the border from Canada or Mexico into the United States. You'll also get $5 in DoorDash credits each month through December 31st of 2024 and $15 in statement credits each month for Instacart purchases through July 2024. I know it's not exactly credits, but the Chase Sapphire Reserve also gives you two complimentary years of Lyft Pink membership when you activate it by December 31st, 2024. You also get a one-year DoorDash Pass subscription when you activate it by December 31st, 2024 and a year of complimentary Instacart plus membership when you activate by July 31st, 2024. Personally, I find the Amex Platinum Cards credits more useful than the Chase Sapphire Reserve other than the travel credits because that credit is very hard to beat. It's very good. However, the Amex Platinum Card has like a hundred different credits that you need to keep track of and use in order to help justify the annual fee. It's basically a blessing and a curse to have that many credits to choose from. But it only gets worse because there are even more benefits that come with the Amex Platinum Card. And a lot of these are things that can make your life a lot more enjoyable. Before we go down this rabbit hole, please give this video a like or dislike, depending on how you're feeling and going through this training list. And maybe even consider subscribing if you're feeling special. But let's take a deep breath and start with probably the most popular benefits of the Amex Platinum Card, which is Centurion Lounge Access and a Priority Pass membership for even more lounge access at airports. There are people who find this benefit a hit or miss because maybe you don't like going early to the airport. You prefer to just get out of your car and rush to the airport gates and go straight onto the plane. Or another reason why this benefit might not make a difference is because the Priority Pass lounges or Centurion lounges may be too crowded every time that you show up and you have to wait in like an hour long line just to get in or you never get in. Sure, people have their reasons, which maybe there's more than those two that I just talked about. But personally, I've had great experiences with the lounge access that the Platinum Card gives me and I love having this benefit. Yes, I've had to wait in line to go into a lounge, Sometimes, yes, lines are so long that I didn't get into the lounge before my flight. But overall, through the ups and downs, I think this is a positive benefit and I get a lot of use and value out of it. Up next is the Resi Global Dining Access benefit, which if you could use, this can be a nice perk to have. This is another lesser known or talked about benefit because 
it's kind of another hit or miss. <laughs> Through Resi's global dining access, you can use something called Priority Notify. When a table isn't available at a Resi restaurant, you could set push alerts for your desired time range, and they basically send you a notification where they free up so that way you could book it. Or another thing you could do is to call the Amex concierge to find sold out tables at Resi restaurants. All Resi restaurants have a couple tables saved or set aside for global dining access members. So you could potentially get a spot at a restaurant that you normally could not have if you didn't have the Amex Platinum card. How often will you actually use this benefit? Probably not often, maybe even never. I've used this, I think once or twice, and that's about it. It's only really useful if there's a lot of restaurants or resi restaurants in your area. Another hit or miss benefit is the International Airline Program. This benefit allows you to book international premium economy business class or first class seats at a lower fare than you might find elsewhere. To do this, you must book through the Amex travel portal and filter by the international airline program. I have found that sometimes you can find cheaper flights through this program when compared to Google flights or booking directly. Usually the savings are greater for first class and business class as opposed to premium economy seats. With the Platinum card, you also have access to the fine hotels and resorts program along with the hotel collection and all of their benefits, which we already covered earlier in this video. More hotel related benefits are automatic Marriott Bonvoy gold status and automatic Hilton Honors gold status. And more status related benefits are automatic Avis preferred status, Hertz Gold Plus reward status, and National Emerald Club car rental status. And if you own the Amex Platinum card, you could get a promo code discount for Hertz, which can add four extra hours to your reservation for your car rental, and even give you a lower fee than other promo codes available. All right, I'm gonna warn you again right now that we still have a bunch more benefits to go through on this travel credit card, the Amex Platinum, but I wanted to be extra thorough here because although you may not use these benefits that often, they actually can can come in handy and make a memorable difference in your life. So let's start with some customer service focused benefits such as the Platinum Travel Service, which is basically your own personal travel agent who will help set up a custom itinerary and give you recommendations to make the most out of your upcoming trip. Of course, they will be pushing for you to use the Amex Travel Portal to book your flights and hotels, but they have made some good activity recommendations for me in the past. A more general customer service benefits of the Amex Platinum card is the concierge service. This is where you can have a representative from American Express help you look for things such as restaurant reservations, look for theater or event tickets, or even helping with gift shopping. For example, one Valentine's Day, I called the Amex Platinum Concierge Service to look into purchasing flowers for my girlfriend. They asked questions like, what location to look into, what type of flowers does she want, what kind of color do you want, etc., etc. And a few days later, after they did their research and after they called all of these different florists around the area, they came back to me with a bunch of different results that I could choose from. Again, I want to reiterate that this isn't a game changing benefit for most of you. And it's not a great reason to get the Amex Platinum card, but I did save at least 15 to 30 minutes of time and I didn't have to call anyone else to look into this. It really made that experience a lot easier. It's like having a personal assistant for some of these things. I might not use this every week, every month, maybe once or twice a year, but it does still add value to my life when I use it. I've also used this to help make dinner reservations. They would call multiple restaurants for me and find one that has the right time and day that I want. It's really great for lazy people. Another customer service focused benefit of the Amex Platinum card is the Global Assist Hotline. Personally, I've never had to use this because it's more so for emergencies, but you could look online and hear about other stories like for example, this Reddit user here. Global Assist is amazing. Our carry-on with medications in it was lifted at an airport. Global Assist contacted our doctor, arranged an urgent prescription refill, and had it sent to the pharmacy across the street from our hotel. Years ago, they got us emergency flights home when one of us became terribly ill and needed to get home to a specialist the next day. Not something, or hopefully not something you would use very often, but at least in this person's case, it was a game changer, potentially life-saving experience, possibly, but it made things a lot easier and you have that option with the Amex Platinum card. Now let's move focus to benefits that not too many people cover and it's not really widely talked about. These are more experience-based benefits that the Amex Platinum card offers. With this card, you have access to ticket pre-sales for a specified window of time before public access. Typical events include sports, theater, performances, concerts, and cultural events. You can find these pre-sale tickets through the Amex portal or through Ticketmaster. Off topic, but 
Ticketmaster does suck because they have a monopoly and I don't really like their service and we could go on and on about that. The Amex Platinum card, as well as more than a dozen American Express issued credit cards, come with a preferred seating benefit that gives card members access to priority seat selection for specific events. You could check out which events you could use these benefits at through the American Express Experience website. Or if you're booking a ticket through Ticketmaster, you can see the American Express preferred seating filter here. As an Amex Platinum holder, you also have access to invitation only events. This includes experiences like at the Grand Prix, Formula One, or even at the PGA Tour golf event. Despite the name, you do not need to be invited to attend these experiences. You just need to search for an invitation only experience on that American Express experience website and call concierge to purchase that package or ticket through them. At the event, you'll have special American Express amenities like a special seating area, special food and drink service, etc. Then one of the cooler experience benefits available to Platinum card holders are the Centurion Centurion Suites and Amex pop-up events. The Centurion Suites are available at certain sporting events and venues such as Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles, the United Center in Chicago, the Barclays Center in New York, and even the O2 Arena in London. The benefits will vary depending on the venue, but some of the things you could expect are special card member entrances to the venue, all the way up to a private suite for you to watch the event in, and even get free drinks and be able to purchase food. I've been to the suites at the Crypto.com Arena twice so far for an LA Lakers game versus Warriors and a Clippers versus Trailblazers game. At that venue specifically, you're given two free drinks and you can order food that you can't order when you're just walking around the stadium. There's even a great viewing area up there where you could watch the entire game from. I've talked to people in there that say that they buy cheap nosebleed seats, but they just hang out in this Centurion suite for the whole game. One of the more memorable times was at the LA Lakers versus Warriors game because we sat at the bar, literally right in front of the bartenders or one of them. He was giving us free drinks all night, free chasers, free soda, water all night. Just overall great service because you know we're right in front of him. We we're talking story. Of course, we tipped him very well at the end of the night, but that was such a memorable well, almost not so memorable experience because of all the alcohol we were drinking, but it wouldn't have been possible without the Amex Platinum Card. The last few Amex Platinum Card benefits are a free shop runner membership, which is available at certain online stores where you get free two-day shipping. You have access to Amex offers where you could save money or earn extra Amex points. You have no foreign transaction fees, and you could choose from three different card designs. Another example of a pop-up event is in Punta de Este, Uruguay, which actually I'm going to in May, so stay tuned for that. But they have like a nice beach setup that's just for Amex Platinum card holders. You could use like free sports equipment there. You get these chairs, these, what are those called? Like cabanas, and it's just a really nice setup. Again, it's very limited, like who's going to Uruguay, and it's for a limited time from December to March. So I won't even be able to use it but it's cool that they have these different pop-up events around the world. So if you do happen to be in the area, it can make a fun time for you. With all of those long, never-ending benefits on the Amex Platinum card, how can the Chase Sapphire Reserve compete? Well, you're about to find out. Starting with Lounge Access, you also get a Priority Pass membership, but unlike the Amex Platinum card, you also get a Priority Pass restaurant credits. Currently, there are around 37 different Priority Pass restaurants across 25 different US airports. And at each of those Priority Pass restaurants, a Chase Sapphire Reserve card holder and one guest will be able to receive $28 of credits each to be used on food or drink. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is one of the few credit cards remaining that has this credit available. This is great because number one, $28 for one person, even though it's in the airport, is still a healthy amount of credit to use for a meal and a drink. Number two, the food you're getting from a restaurant is probably gonna be better than the food you're gonna find in the airport lounge. Number three, Priority Pass restaurants are probably gonna be less full than those Priority Pass lounges. But the Chase Sapphire Reserve also gives you access to Chase Sapphire lounges. They don't have nearly as many lounges as American Express Centurion lounges, but there are lounges in Boston, Hong Kong, New York City, LGA, and JFK. And there are soon to be lounges in Las Vegas, Philadelphia, San Diego, and Phoenix. There's even a special Sapphire Terrace at the Austin Airport, which Chase Sapphire Reserve card holders have access to. You'll also have access to the Etihad Lounge at Dulles Airport in Washington, DC. If you're someone that likes to use Chase Points to book free flights or hotels, then you may find the Chase Sapphire Reserve benefit of receiving 1.5 cent per point value when you redeem your Chase Points for travel through the Chase 
travel portal helpful. Sure, this may not be as valuable as transferring out your chase points to a travel partner where you could receive two cents per point or higher, but redeeming your points through the chase travel portal with this benefit is a lot easier and simpler than transferring your points out. 1.5 cents per point is pretty solid, especially if you only need to spend a few minutes looking for a flight redemption to use it on. You don't have to spend hours trying to find a transfer partner or a transfer partner flight that will work. Sometimes you have to add value for simplicity and not just go off of the pure cent per point value. Next, we have a Chase Sapphire Reserve benefit that sounds kind of familiar to one of the benefits the Amex Platinum card has. The Chase Sapphire Reserve provides cardholders with certain amenities and benefits when they stay at a select number of hotels booked through the Chase Travel Portal. Their collection is called the Edit. Previously, it was called Luxury Hotel and Resort Collection, which honestly to me sounds better than the Edit because it's like, what are you editing? Why is it called the edit? However, if you book an eligible hotel in the edits or in a hotel in the edit collection, you'll receive a daily breakfast for two, $100 property credits for dining, spa, or other activities, and a room upgrade at check-in if available, early check-in slash late checkout if available, and complimentary Wi-Fi. But on top of that, at other hotels, specifically NSMR properties, which are Delano, Hyde, Mon Mondrian, Morgan's Originals, and SLS hotels around the world, you have a lot more benefits to choose from and you get with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Some of these benefits include late checkout, complimentary breakfast for two, $30 credit for food and beverage, complimentary upgrade if available, a welcome beverage after check-in, and more. Having benefits like these are great because it's pretty much many of the great benefits that you would receive if you had status with the hotel, except you're just getting it from booking using a certain credit card. And speaking of status, you also receive complimentary National Emerald Club status and Avis Preferred Plus status with your Sapphire Reserve. On top of that, you will receive discounts on Avis and national car rental purchases that are made with your Chase Sapphire Reserve. Moving away from status-based benefits, the Chase Sapphire Reserve also provides you with experience-based benefits, much like the Amex Platinum card. The first of which are called Reserved by Sapphire. Here you'll get an extraordinary lineup of experiences including culinary sports, music, and entertainment. You can find a full list at the Reserve by Sapphire website. However, a few examples of these events and their benefits are the Dreamville Fest with access to VIP tickets, private party and a Sapphire Lounge at the venue, or a Dinner on the Court series at the Chase Center in San Francisco, Madison Square Garden in New York City, and the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. You also have early access to certain tickets and priority preferred seating once again available through Ticketmaster or the Chase Experience website. And with your Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you can access certain pop-up events such as these at the Big Bear Mountain Resorts, Palisades Tahoe, and Steamboat Springs. The last kind of miscellaneous Chase Sapphire Reserve benefits are 10X on Peloton purchases over $150 through March 31st, 2025, no foreign transaction fees, access to the Visa Infinite Concierge Service, and access to travel and emergency assistance, which is kind of like the Global Assist Hotline on the Platinum card. Personally, I have not had experience with the Visa Infinite Concierge Service, but you could get help with travel planning, dinner reservations, sports entertainment tickets, and more. So it seems kind of like the Amex Concierge Service. Before we go into which card might be right for you, we have one last section to go through, which is each card's protections and insurances. Both of these premium travel credit cards have a lot of overlapping protections and insurances, so I'll start with all of the ones that they have in common. But keep in mind that some of the details of each may vary from from both of the cards, like the exact amount they will cover, etc. Both have car rental loss and damage insurance, aka collision damage waivers, except the Amex Platinum card is secondary insurance, while the Chase Sapphire Reserve is primary insurance. Basically, primary car rental insurance provides coverage for rental vehicles without requiring you to involve your personal auto insurance policy, which makes it better. Primary insurance is better than secondary insurance. Both credit cards have trip delay insurance, trip cancellation and interruption insurance, return protection, purchase protection, extended warranty, travel accident insurance, and lost damage or stolen baggage insurance. The Amex Platinum card offers cell phone protection, while the Chase Sapphire Reserve provides roadside assistance as a part of their distinct coverages and protection. Now, the big question is which credit card, the Amex Platinum or the Chase Sapphire Reserve is better for you? Of course, frequent travelers 
members will benefit from either of these cards. So if you don't travel at all or very much, you may want to reconsider your options. Even if you pass that first check, the next question you should ask yourself is, will you use those Amex Platinum Card credits? If you don't want to worry about using a lot of credits or you won't use many of those credits, then the Chase Sapphire Reserve might be more valuable option for you there since there aren't as many credits or as high of an annual fee to worry about. Another thing to consider is if you travel with guests and want to use airport lounges. With the Amex Platinum Card and the Amex Centurion Lounges, you're going to have to pay $50 per guest that you bring in, whereas with the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Sapphire Lounges, you could bring up to two guests for free, an additional guest for $27. Another thing to consider, which I didn't go into much detail in this video, is do you prefer the Chase ecosystem or the Amex points ecosystem? What I mean by that is the Chase points are usually more flexible. You're able to use them for cash back at a one cent per point value whereas with Amex it's a 0.6 cent per point value or take a look at the different transfer partners that Chase and Amex offer. Do you prefer one over the other? These are some of the questions that you could ask yourself to help determine which credit card better suits your needs and your lifestyle. I will say that it is entirely possible that you could benefit from having both of these credit cards. But other than that, I hope this video really helped you out and helped you get a better idea of which credit card would be better for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Shoots.